Good morning, traders. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Welcome to the Bookmap Live Order Flow Advanced Webinars. Okay, risk disclaimer, trading uh, futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so this is the uh, advanced education. Okay, comes along with the educational course when you subscribe. And uh, we're gonna go through uh, as many examples of order flow phenomena as we can and uh, support the educational course. Okay, seeing it in the live market here and then based on our analysis, we'll start to anticipate where price might go. Uh, and uh, start off with a few things. Um, I just want to, um, we'll, I had a few trades to go over uh, this morning. And then I also have, um, I wanna review uh, ye yesterday's price action and then ask you guys some questions about today. Uh, and then I also just want to uh, back up here and show you uh, some recent content that uh, we created. I think you'll find it helpful, all right? So uh, on our, um, uh, Twitter page here at bookmap underscore pro. Okay, uh, we uh, released this here for uh, comparing bookmap to volume profile charts. Right, so uh, let me um, show this here to you. Click on the link here, uh, and um, that'll take you to this web page. All right, uh, and uh, since this is such a popular um, uh, trading uh, uh, tool, you're looking at your volume profile. Uh, we wanted to make the comparisons here because there's a lot that you're just not getting. Uh, I, you know, I really like volume profile. Uh, there's, uh, I just think that there's a lot of um, uh, obscurity or uh, opacity still within volume profile. Okay, uh, first off is the volume is not even separated by aggressor. Okay, that's number one. Uh, but number two is you just don't understand where they're bidding and offering. It's just not there in the chart, okay? And that's where bookmap can be really, really helpful uh, on all, all time frames. So here's the comparisons, uh, and, uh, and take a look here, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, wh where is that liquidity? What's that context of liquidity uh, versus uh, these uh, volume uh, profile areas? That's what we want to understand. Okay, and that's what's going to lead to very insightful trading decisions on your part. All right, so uh, uh, take a look at some of these examples, and uh, you can see what we've done here uh, is compare uh, book map to the profile. So number one here looks at book map. Number one here looks at the profile. And number two, we're looking at book map. And then number two here, we're looking at the profile. Okay, pretty simple stuff, uh, but... Um, uh, you'll see, uh, uh, you know, what I'm talking about here as you go through it. Now that said, okay, we've now this is uh, the the volume profile comparison. We also have the comparison down here with the footprint charts. Okay, it's another popular um, uh, uh, trading tool here, uh, and again, it's just there's some opacity here. Uh, it's only showing the volume. Okay, we want the context here. Uh, of the liquidity, like they pulled a lot of liquidity here, and then the sellers start to ramp up their selling, right? And they can see that uh, started to get, you know, uh, high liquidity up here, uh, and uh, <coughs> you do not see that in the footprint chart. I mean, you're you're really just kind of guessing at it, uh, and you're just looking at transactions. That's just that's not the full picture. Okay, the full picture is here. Okay, it's the auction. Okay, I mean, you don't you don't show up at uh, uh, the farmers market or at, let's say you're uh, an auction for an automobile uh, and just look at the transactions. Uh, you're 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 in the process for bidding and and uh, offering uh, uh, well bidding for like uh, uh, that automobile, okay? and that's what you want to understand is that context, right? And that's what uh, you can get here, right? So I just wanted to go through that because um, this might help clarify uh, if you're uh, uh, you want more in, insight on uh, understanding liquidity, this might help clarify uh, for you, okay? All right, and higher time frame stuff. Uh, let's take a look at that. Okay, okay, just to review, uh, and then we'll look at um, the live market here. We're coming down into a pretty, pretty interesting level right at the moment. Could not make it up to that 2,700 figure. Okay. You can see it's been struggling, but this is what I want to go through. All right, uh, we're looking at a 30-minute chart here, and uh, let's see here. This was this was back on the 22nd. Okay, this was um, so. Let's see here, the 19th. So this was uh, Sunday. This is Monday. So Monday we had the big move down here. 
right? But all of this is, it, we, and we covered this yesterday, uh, it's just kind of a, a repeat because I just want to go through the bigger picture here in the context of order flow and volume uh, and structure in the bigger picture. And we're going we're gonna, to um, uh, take that information and um, put it right into uh, uh, the current market in the order flow in book map. It's the same stuff. Uh, we're just looking at uh, the bigger picture here. Um, and we just don't have the heat map, nor do we have exactly where the volume traded in this candlestick chart. But that's okay. We can uh, we can basically see what happened uh, uh, in in book map, or we can um, uh, you know just we know what happened here <laughs> by looking at this chart. Um, all right, so uh, the open here continued to the downside, trapped everybody. Uh, we we're at a level of interest down here. We had 2,700 to figure down here. We found some buyers, and then. You know, it, it's a short squeeze here, all the way back up to where that volume uh, basically here closed on Monday was back up here. Okay, we almost came back up to it, just shy of it. Okay, so anyone trapped up here during that day, man, I'll bet you they're they're um, they're sellers, right? Uh, if they were buying in these areas up here, they're going to be selling up here on that higher time frame for sure, uh, and and they'll take a small loss. Uh, anyway, we go sideways for a bit here, uh, and then. Um, uh, then we start to drop back down, okay? So uh, just understanding overnight volume here, look at the volume down in the volume chart here, and then look at the volume pickup here. It's 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 returning back up to where there was important volume earlier, right? And that, and there's, there's your volume profile as well. But uh, think of uh, all the uh, people getting squeezed here, uh, you know, thinking that, oh my God, look at Monday, it's, it's selling off, I better jump in on the sell side. Uh, and... Um, uh, and and, and then this, this was the output here, or the outcome. Uh, the um, we go sideways for a bit. Uh, let's see here. Um, so this was uh, this was yesterday here. Uh, this is what I want to cover. Okay, so we we continued on down uh, yesterday. We we're looking for uh, 2,700 the figure to trade. It finally did. Uh, and then uh, I, in fact I, I tweeted about that uh, here. Let's see. Okay, so if you want to take a look at that. Uh, there's a, a tweet here. Uh, this is, uh, I, I took a trade uh, after the webinar here. So webinar stops, uh, you know, around maybe 12 um, o'clock or so. Uh, this is all Eastern time. Uh, and then, uh, you know, this is, uh, these were the decisions I made here. Okay. Uh, so you can go through this and see that uh, uh, looking at much higher time frames. Okay. Getting short here on a pullback. Okay. Same stuff we're going through here. Uh, a little, uh, you know, I'm getting my feet wet again here uh, on uh, the S&P um, just because, uh, you know, this thing rotates back and forth a few times and uh, I was willing to take a, a little bit. I moved my stop down immediately to the top of the range here thinking that I've got it. The S&P al almost always comes back once or twice uh, more. Therefore, I said, okay, I, I like this position. Uh, I'm looking, been looking for it all day to trade down to the 2,700 figure. Uh, I'll just move my stops up above the uh, point of control and VWAP up here. Okay, so that's what I did. Uh, I was willing to take that risk, uh, and then we saw this continuation here uh, to the downside, down at this little area here where the uh, the buyer stepped in. That's where I'm taking partial profit, right there. Okay, uh, and then uh, and then we continue on to the downside. Uh, I immediately, you know, I had two two positions here, uh, one two, and then I um, uh, moved uh, this. Uh, well, the stop loss is all together, uh, but I moved uh, uh, one position here for that partial, and the other one way down here at that 2700, just front running it. Right, we were looking at it earlier. They were front running uh, all day yesterday, uh, but. Um, you know that was my target, and um, and then it was ultimately hit here later around uh, 115 or so. All right. So anyway, that's just some of the process here uh, going through that. Uh, and I I want to ask here. So did anyone uh, start to understand what was going on to, in today's um, uh, higher time frame order flow? Okay. So again, it is very similar. Uh, we see the overnight session here going sideways. Okay. We bump up to the upside right to where okay, we, uh, we dropped from here, and it spiked, uh, volume spiked here, okay, uh, into this area here. And that was the, um, uh, the swing high for the overnight. Right? And then, uh, again, it's uh, all of this volume that's down here. Okay? And this is, this is the close down here. Right? Let's see, Let's see the close is actually right on this candle here. Okay? 
So the close is down here. Well, look at look at how we just did not come back down there. Uh, if we did come down there, we found buyers, right? So these guys are feeling the squeeze now, okay? And um, uh, then, uh, you know, we uh, uh, we stayed above this area here until the open. The open, we did come back down and test it again. We found buyers, and okay? we found buyers, and this, there's going to be a point of control probably right around in here. Uh, we, uh, we hit it, and it's back off to the upside, okay, to find out where those sellers are. And we're coming right back up into that figure here. Okay, just shy of it. I'm, I'm surprised we have not tested it yet. All right. So anyway, uh, uh, just uh, understanding the same concepts that we were looking at um, back on uh, uh, Tuesday, uh, we're seeing again play play out again today. All right. And this is much higher time frame stuff. We're looking at where the important volume traded compared to where this overnight uh, volume is going to be getting squeezed, uh, et cetera. Right, and we'll be looking at the same thing here when we start to look at much lower time frames. Okay, any questions on that? And I'm just curious if any of you guys uh, started to take positions and saw some of that earlier today, okay? Or if you saw that uh, on um, uh, on Tuesday too. All right. Anyway, yeah, let me know. Um, I'd, I'd love to uh, uh, take a look at uh, if you guys want to even send some of your trades, and we can cover them uh, if you want. Uh, take a look at some of them, okay, and go in the, go over it in the webinar. Uh, that would be great. Um, okay, so uh, let's go. Let's jump into uh, one more thing before we look at the live market here. Uh, we are coming down into an interesting area, though. Yeah, I mean, just still looking for a little bit lower here, to be honest. Uh, I, I like this area here, just below the swing here. Pretty nice around this 82, 83 area here. All right, so uh, anyway, uh, so we can uh, we can go over, uh, we can kind of wait this one out a little bit and then go over transaction that I took earlier uh, and my decision-making process, okay? So, uh, you know, I was I was bullish. I was looking for the squeeze higher uh, this morning. Uh, and um, let's uh, just go through the, uh, the details. Okay, and it was hard. I got, I'm still kind of getting my, my feet wet, like I, I mentioned. Uh, here in uh, the S&P because of these rotations uh, where I was getting very accustomed to that um, that NASDAQ and looking for the follow through immediately. Uh, anyway, I missed the uh, beginning open here. Um, well, uh, hold on a minute here. Let me back up. All right, so the open 930 here, and you can see the move to the downside, right? Everyone thinks again, we're going short. This is, you know, everything's breaking down. Oh my God. Uh, but uh, trap all of these guys here at this point up above here. Okay. Uh, at this kind of 82 level here. Okay. We trade into this high liquidity here and through it. And then they flip from the offer to the bid. Okay. They're even down below a little lower here, which actually looks like a really good area. It just never came back down. Now, this is where it gets tricky for me, at least in the S&P, because this is the open. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I'm getting used to these rotations. Uh, but at the open, there's such strong volume uh, that uh, uh, you don't get those rotations uh, maybe a, as often. Uh, or at least in this case, we got follow through and it just continued to grind here to the upside. Here's the big pullback here. Uh, and then um, and then it continued again, all right? So uh, I got stopped out uh, on this trade here. So let's go through it. So I saw the uh, the pullback here, right? I'm bullish, uh, you know, came back down, found buyers down at this area. Uh, nice cluster here of buying, and um, we see buying up above it here, okay? A, a small pullback here, I'm in, okay? And I'm looking for uh, more volume up here to trade. Okay, and then that continuation to the upside because it's starting to pick up here. Uh, so I'm looking for that uh, that move higher. Okay, I place my stop uh, down below this swing here or this cluster here. Okay, I'm willing to take that risk. Okay, so a couple points down below it. Uh, and um, uh, then, uh, I, you know, I did note that uh, this is where obviously they um, uh, picked it up uh, volume-wise, uh, the, the, uh, these... Um, uh, bulls uh, started to come right into this area here. And uh, that's where we ultimately went to, but I was not willing to take that risk because I was afraid uh, that uh, if we come back down a little bit lower here, we can find a ton of sellers and I can get slipped on my stop loss and get uh, a down lower here. I'm just not, I was not willing to take the risk. 
right? Ultimately, it just went down a little bit further before it started to rotate back up, uh, and that's fine. Uh, you know, I'm willing to, uh, uh, I had my uh, decision, uh, I'm, I was very bullish. I was looking for basically uh, a pullback to about this area and then find those buyers again, okay? So it didn't work out that way. Uh, I got stopped out, uh, but I'm still bullish here. Uh, and then um, let's see here as I go through. Okay, so uh, same same type of thing. I'm still bullish, okay? We get more volume, higher highs here. Uh, and um, the... Uh, Move back down into kind of this area here, okay? And then you see that see where they started to kind of initiate here a bit. Uh, I see the pullback to it, and I see the, the buyers start to step in again, okay? And I, I'm jumping in, okay? So I jumped in, market buy, uh, and then um, I used OCO order here to, uh, to manage my stops, okay? And uh, I moved my stops up pretty quickly, as well as my, uh, I think my target as well. Hold on. Oh, come on. I've got a lot of data here. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, so my uh, my take profit was way up here. Okay, once this started to go and it, it started to confirm my direction, okay, we get another pullback here. It goes, it goes immediately my way up to the top of the, in almost to the top of the range here. We do get a ro rotation back here. Okay, and it's supported, and then here it looks great. Now I know, I, you know, I, I think I've got it here, right? I'm willing to, uh, uh, at this point here, you see what I did? I moved my stop, my uh, take profit up, uh, front running this high liquidity up here uh, in the book around uh, 95 or so, uh, and um, and then I moved, started to move my stop up as well, uh, and then, uh, uh, yeah, I was uh, was looking for this 95 actually to trade and looking for it to even go into 2700. I just didn't see at that point the liquidity up here at 2700, even though that's ultimately where I think it's going. Okay, so I'm willing to uh, front run this here. And then what did I do here? Well, I, sh I noted this, okay, and I was not willing to give this back. Uh, this looks pretty good. I saw the selling coming in here, okay, and I see a little bit of exhaustion here. I'm going to move this down into uh, where those sellers initiated here, and, uh, and then I took my take profit here. Okay, those are my limit uh, limit sell orders here. Okay, and then I'm out. I'm flat. All right. So anyway, uh, that was the uh, decision making process based on some of the uh, order flow uh, using that heat map context here, as well as uh, the um, uh, the volume. Okay. Let me know if you guys have any questions on this. Oh, thanks, Mikhail. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, these are these are smaller trades. I mean, I don't have a lot of time. Uh, to go uh, uh, over uh, a lot of this stuff here in the morning or go through this. So uh, we're going to be looking at some smaller time frames uh, in the morning. In the afternoon, I can let it run a bit, all right, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. But uh, that's uh, – uh, we looked at, uh, you know, the tweet that I, I sent out yesterday and let that let that run uh, to the downside, okay? Anyway, um, so uh, – Let's see what uh, what happened here. So still looking for that 2700. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. There's the move above. All right. So that's what we were just going through uh, as well. Would have loved to have seen it come down to this um, uh, just a little bit lower to 83. It didn't. Okay. And here's the move. Now, this is pretty typical. This is that rotation uh, again. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we even have like... Um, you know, some patterns up here, kind of head and shoulder and a, re a reversal pattern here. But uh, the, ultimately, like, I'm still bullish. Uh, and we came back down instead to where? Okay. Right where these guys initiated here on that buy side. Okay. We found the bulls. Okay. So here's the little little um, liquidity grab below this area here. And let's take a look at this here because um, I think this will be helpful. Uh, I'm looking for the bigger liquidity grab down below 82.83 here. We didn't get it. Uh, instead, uh, let's just take a look here because the S&P and the volume that trades is just just amazing. Um, so um, uh, what do we see down here that we can maybe start to look for, uh, uh, you know, trapping some of those, uh, those sellers or low enough to find some buyers? And what we can see in the book that we found enough buyers layering in here at this level at 91. 
Uh, they're, they're transacting here, it looks like, also at 88, uh, and then also uh, here at 87, okay? Ultimately down here at 85 as well, that's that's pretty nice uh, to see that, okay? This is, this is what I'm looking for. Now, look at all these sellers, and look how the buyers took that uh, and uh, moved it above all, all of these sellers here. This is where the trap is. See how the buyers came in right here? This is what we're looking for. Let's just mark it up right here. Boom. Okay. Uh, and um, now where the buyers start to step in. Okay. And we're not coming back to this area here. Okay. The buyers are in control and these guys are going to feel the pain. Okay. And then I'm just going through these uh, stop runs or trapped volume here because we're seeing a lot of it uh, in this environment right? A lot of squeezes here. Uh, and uh, look at this uh, nice uh, nice move to the upside. Okay, not only are the, all of these sellers here, they're going to be buyers. There's also going to be buyers on the other side just ramping it up here. Okay, bullish. Uh, I was bullish. I, I would have loved to have seen this in real time. Um, this is actually during the webinar, so it's, it's too bad. Uh, I was going through uh, all these other trades and uh, other high time frame stuff. Uh, and uh, and miss this, uh, and that's too bad. But uh, uh, anyway, I just I'm sorry about that. But I, you know, some of that higher time frame stuff. A lot of people have been asking about it, uh, and I I want to cover it uh, and think it has a lot of value for you. Okay, so uh, uh, do you guys want me to continue? Do you want to see more of that? Uh, let me know. Okay, because uh, uh, you know it's also nice to see this stuff in real time. Uh, this is a nice move. And this is ultimately what we were looking for anyway, right? Uh, was that 2,700 of the figure up here. In fact, look at the, look at their behavior here. They're pulling, right? They, they start to pull. Uh, now they're up at this uh, 04, 05 area. Okay, now they're up here also at uh, kind of 8 and 9. They've been up there for a while. Okay, but this this area here is uh, actually the maybe the bigger picture. Yeah, Robert, um, from 9.15 to 10.15, you'd like to see the webinar. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think we'll be able to do that. Uh, there's, you know, so many other people that are, um, you know, really, uh, uh, you know, that's when they focus on the uh, their trading. Uh, so it's going to take them out. Uh, that's why we do it later. So that uh, they they can they can you know start to understand and in fact you know uh, Robert to be honest um, it's a more challenging time to go over uh, the order flow uh, is uh, you know around around this time around you know after 11 I mean 11:30 to 12 that can be a challenging time uh, and uh, that's good actually it's it's beneficial so you guys can understand um, some of the um, uh, nuances in the order flow. Okay, where they really start to pick up, um, uh, you know, or see the distinctions because it can be tricky time, uh, and um, we've seen it many times over. The more challenging, the better. Yeah, I mean, it is. I, I find it a bit more challenging. You just don't have as it's not as clear, right? It just doesn't have the same kind of clarity as that open might have. Uh, the one thing, like you know, takeaways, like from, and, and I continue to go over this, uh, not only for myself. Um, uh, but I mean, for you guys here, the takeaways in this one-click trading is fantastic. Because look at my actions. Okay, they're all recorded here. Okay, what was what were my decision um, decisions here? Okay, I covered them. Right. Do the same with your trading. Right. Uh, and then share them in here if you like as well. Uh, or mark up your charts uh, as well. Okay, and we can go through some uh, some examples. Right. Uh, because. Uh, uh, you know, this is where you start to learn all sorts of nuances in the order flow, okay? So, for example, uh, I mentioned uh, that uh, uh, for me, I'm just kind of getting my feet wet again uh, with this instrument. I haven't traded it for a while now, uh, but, uh, you know, the different rotations uh, and understanding that from yesterday as well as today uh, and, uh, and earlier in the week, too. Uh, no, Suleiman, I did not get uh, the uh, URX, uh, but uh, we're going to try to do that, okay? Uh, and uh, the, 
Well, what I want to cover here uh, is, uh, yeah, what were my reactions to the order flow? Okay, well, here they are. It's all recorded. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, you can't hide from that, uh, which is really nice. The, um, uh, oh, so the takeaways from this and how to improve. I mean, this kind of um, debriefing here uh, is just, uh, I, I find it uh, rather essential uh, to making yourself a better trader. So I'm looking for more, you know, pullbacks and swings uh, with the S&P. Well, at the open, though, I'm not. Okay, not not as much, right? You now we're getting we get follow through because there's just much more volume, right? And that's learned from today. I mean, look at this, uh, you know, move higher here in this grind, right? And I was bullish. I wanted to get in down here. I I was looking for a, ro a rotation here, I, and I didn't. I didn't get it, right? I should have just jumped in. Uh, now you know, n knowing that, um, I I would have been in a, at a much lower uh, area here. Okay, instead of taking the risk up here. Right, uh, because I was looking for this to continue higher, uh, and I just didn't get a pullback to get in. Right. Well, on those kind of grinds, and when there's a lot of volume, uh, you're not going to get those pullbacks. You might get just very, very slight pullbacks, uh, maybe this one here. Okay, and uh, and then you get that, uh, you know, this grind like this, and it doesn't, it just doesn't allow you a pullback. This one kind of did here at 82, um, and um, yeah, I, I missed that. Good morning, Homera. Uh, just going through a little bit of trading activity earlier. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, the differences here between uh, uh, markets uh, as well as, uh, uh, you know, how, how to um, assess that with uh, your, your uh, decision making. Okay. And then uh, here seeing it again. And uh, this time, uh, yeah, willing to, you know, and, you know, if I got stopped out down here, well, you know, that that's fine. In fact, you know, another thing. Uh, looking at this in hindsight now, okay, I'm I was bullish in this area here, right? I saw the volume pick up here. I know that this was a, a deep pullback, okay, but I saw them come up where above in this area here. This is this is looking good. That's why I jumped in, right? But then look at all this exhaustion here. Okay, I'm just looking for those buyers to to step in and ramp it up, probably around here, right? Uh, and uh, and then I have my stop just down below it. And they didn't. They came all the way back down to this area here, right? Stopped me out and went down a little bit further, uh, and then uh, and then moved and rotated back up, and then got the follow through. Okay. Once I saw the follow through, jumped in again, uh, and then got a nice trade. Okay. So uh, anyway, that's um, uh, you know, in hindsight, uh, you know, well maybe if I start to see this here, uh, I, I'll uh, you know just consider jumping out, you know, taking either a very small loss or maybe break even. Okay. But I was bullish. I was looking for those uh, those buyers to step in probably here, uh, and then uh, they just didn't, right? And uh, this, this is a risk I was willing to take. Right? And then we see the move to the upside uh, over here. All right. So uh, anyway, uh, rotational uh, market, S&P, much more com compared to others due to the amount of volume. But uh, the open, uh, I'll, be, I'll be a little more um, uh, uh, looking more for uh, or looking for less rotations, okay? And uh, looking for maybe uh, because there's more volume at the open, right? Looking for a little more kind of volatile market uh, and, and maybe playing it that way. Okay. And that's my, my assessment and learning from the uh, uh, some of these uh, trade uh, activities that I took. All right, guys. Well, anyway, we traded now up into uh, this uh, 05 area here. It looks good. Uh, let's zoom in a bit further. Okay, and let's assess here and see if these guys are starting to uh, stay in the book now because uh, we're getting up here pretty high. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so the, they're starting to stay in the book here. We see over a 1,000 contracts trade up here okay, into that area of high liquidity. Uh, they are still supporting it underneath. Okay, looks pretty good, actually, at 03. Um, and then uh, we just, here's here's the breakout up above into 06, okay? Did they get filled up here? No, they pulled, and okay, they pulled the majority of it. All right, and they're pulling up here at 07 as well.
anyway, we're going to get a bit of a, maybe a bit of a slowdown here due to this, um, you know, uh, absorption at this little area. We did go higher. We did go above it. I'm, I'm a, a little leery at the moment here. I'm looking to see if these guys are for real here at 03. Okay. Cause they're bidding up at a pretty high level here. And let's jump back and let's look at our higher time frame. Yeah. Okay. So we're starting to get up into these areas up here. Um, So this little swing here at 11 uh, might be pretty pretty critical here. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Well, it still looks bullish. Um, you know, it, we're, we're here, here come the sellers right into this 03 area. So we'll get our answer here at 03. Yeah, they're staying in here at, at this kind of 0275. At 03, some of it traded. Okay. And we're finding more sellers down below it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I was a little leery of that area here. Um, but uh, up, up to this move, uh, well, even still, even to this move here, uh, we're still bullish until we get down below this swing here. Okay, and then that's that's just um, around the 2700 figure as well, and you can see there here on the on the bid here at 2700. Okay. All right, for the for the very short term time right now, yeah, we're bearish. Actually, this just uh, flipped it right here. Okay, so uh, let's. I mean, you can see the volume pick up. Uh, so looking for a pullback and then looking to see if they can uh, hit it again. Okay, down to 2700. Okay, that would be the uh, uh, scenario one. Scenario two is, uh, let's get here the line. Um, yeah, maybe this kind of is, is like uh, the, the figure, or maybe about one, uh, oh, one. But um, see, you can see them starting to come into the book here at, uh, at the figure, which is nice. and the swing here as well. All right, anyway, uh, still looking for uh, the swing to test uh, and then uh, the higher liquidity at the figure uh, and to see if they're still in the book. Um, and then uh, the scenario two, which uh, is starting to play out already, um, was looking for this area here, see where they picked it up on the sell side, right? Okay, so can they get uh, volume up above that area here on the buy side? And nothing yet. And they're trying, they're trying, but uh, uh, it's, the sellers are still in, in command of this here, uh, below this kind of 03 and a half in this time frame. <laughs> this is starting to kind of, uh, I, I'm going to delete this here. Uh, although I want to see the volume up above this here, I'm just going to delete this. this is already getting me a little confused. It looked like uh, liquidity. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, above this uh, cluster here, though, is what we're looking for uh, if uh, those buyers step it up here. Okay, it looks like the sellers are still in. Let's see if on this rotation, okay, we've just tested up above the rotation here that we can get down to 2,700 now. See how the S&P does this though? Like, look at this, little higher highs here, just knocking people out, right? Uh, and, you know, getting their positions uh, taken out here. And then finally, you'll, you'll probably get the move on, on this rotation here. 
uh, to the downside. There it is. Uh, it's just beautiful. I mean, like just, you know, this is that takeaway of, of that S&P. This is how the S&P behaves, right? Uh, compared to, uh, I mean, other markets do it too, but uh, it's just uh, it happens more frequently here in the S&P than uh, I've seen in other markets. Okay. So for example, if you miss this move, well, I mean, you can always look for those pullbacks. Okay, so breakout traders uh, in the S and P are, are really tested. Um, you know, their metal is is tested because uh, you'll get those pullbacks. Right. So that said, and you know that about the market, if you're bullish, then always look for the pullback. If you you know, uh, and and then furthermore, extrapolate that to the open, uh, like we were just uh, talking about. Okay, at the open, uh, you might not get that pullback. Right, it, it behaves a little differently at the open. Okay, in the in the order flow, so um, so there's our test in 2700, or I'm sorry, uh, our 01 area here. Okay, let's let's see if we can still hit it down into uh, the figure and uh, in 99 as well. And, and do these guys stay in the book? This is going to be um, important. As it is right now, like um, it's kind of bearish, has a, a little bit of a bearish slant to it because they're down below. They're down at 99, right? And they, they see how the high liquidity is starting to pull in this little area right here as it's coming down. So they're, you know, they're not too willing to buy here. They know they're buying at higher areas. And we can see the subtlety in the order flow or in the book, right? And it's also bear, a little bit uh, uh, bearish here. I mean, it's, it's bullish that they're here you know, to, to buy at the higher area. That's true. Uh, but will this liquidity trade? I would imagine um, uh, it should uh, transact and we should get the, the test into it or they may even pull. Okay. The difference here is that they're not, we don't see front runners coming in. In fact, they're behind it here uh, providing more liquidity. Okay. And that's the, the kind of bearish slant that I mean uh, in this, in this time frame. Okay. So yeah. And, even higher probability that this will, will transact or at least test, I should say. Okay, see, see them even pulling here at 99 and three quarters? There it is. So there's our 2700. Okay, it looks like that transacted. Okay, and let's see if they can take it down a little bit further. 99. That might be enough though. Okay, now we're looking to see if, if you know, the follow through or, uh, you know, if we're going to see it, uh, rotate up above here and find some buyers. Okay, let's zoom in here. Yep. Okay, 700 tra transactions, or I'm sorry, uh, contracts. Okay, and that high liquidity at this area here, that was around 400, right? So uh, quite a bit traded there. Okay, see how they're still down here though? Okay, now we just had a double bottom test here. Okay, and uh, some uh, some volume here, no volume here. Uh, these little double bottoms, I wanna cover this because uh, this one um, now is, it is going lower here. But uh, this, these, these can be really insightful here in this microstructure or more microstructural areas. Okay, is to understand these retests here. If you see very little volume up here, down here at this one, and we rotate back up when we find buyers up here, this is gonna go higher, or it's higher probability that it's gonna go back up to the top of this range up here, okay? Because there was, we have the test down here and we have no one here, but we find buyers, then uh, the, you know we have a, a high probability of, of coming to the other side. Um, yeah, of course, uh, the Homero, the, the, the Russell is uh, available. I just don't have it up. Uh, we kind of switched over from NASDAQ to S&P uh, just due to the volatil volatility. The, the uh, S&P has been moving really nicely. And it's a beast. I mean, I, I always, I'm always just amazed like uh, with the S&P. It's just so much volume trades. Um, 
And uh, it offers us even more insight. Uh, in fact, uh, we can see when uh, some of the algos are, uh, uh, you know, starting to uh, hit the bid or, you know, lift the offer in specific areas uh, with small transactions and they're, they're trying not to move it against them. I don't, we don't really see that right now. But uh, that kind of behavior you can see here in Bookmap very nicely. Okay, that's, that's uh, some insight you're not going to get with uh, other platforms. Because they're going to aggregate it in a, in a, you know, a, a period. Whereas we can see the consistency in that buying in some of these areas here. Now, it's not doing it right now, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly note it when it does. Oh, okay, um, Homero. All right, let's let's add it here. Let's uh, we'll add the Russell here. Uh, we just got a nice little spike here. Uh, okay, so nice little spike, but uh, I that's that's not bad. Uh, I still I'm looking for more volume up at some of these higher areas here on that buy side. Okay, and let's see if they'll support it. Um, all right, let's add that Russell. Uh, click on the plus tab here. Let's go to Rhythmic. Okay, I know you're using Rhythmic as well. Uh, and then um, uh, let's see, is that on? It's on the. Uh, oh, yeah, it's over on the CME now. That's right. Okay. Uh, and what, what is it? Is, is it R? Um, RL? Oh, what? Boy, I, I haven't looked at it in a while here. What's the, uh, what's the symbol, Homera? RTY, that's right. They keep on changing it. They've changed it over the years here. It was back on the uh, ice or something, right? And then that was years ago, and now it's back at the, at the CME. Um, okay, well, that's, that should do the trick. Yeah, I'm getting data. Thanks, Jeffrey. Okay, guys, when you when you first start up, okay, see that see this little uh, uh, area here. Um, you know, it, it could be disconnect or, uh, uh, but the, this is where you know it's adding in the historical data uh, to the left of it, and then to the right of it is the uh, this is uh, actually right from my data provider. Okay. Just to go through that. Okay, so again, Homera might be your broker, right? But it uh, looks good to me. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, see how much more, this is much more complex and tricky here, understanding the order flow in this area here, because uh, the, now you're getting, we're getting these quick moves, right? We're down below the figure, okay, and uh, let's turn on, I keep on forgetting to do this, our iceberg detector, our VWAP, and our point of control. These have been really nice indicators for us lately, really, really nice. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll go over a um, that uh, uh, much higher time frame move that uh, worked out just beautifully here in uh, in the S and P. Okay, let's see here, because this was I think with uh, my my trade, yeah, right here. Okay, so so um, uh, you know this was above the swing high at 95 or so, right? Let's take a look. On the higher time frame, and I'm probably gonna have to go down to a five minute chart. Okay, so I was bullish, right? Okay, and ah, uh, yeah, right here. Okay, so here's the overnight session, okay, at 92. Right, so uh, I was bullish, I'm looking for the move higher, uh, and um, uh, we got it, right. But look what it did. It came back up into above the range here. Let's just go a little bit higher time frame or more screen. Uh, you know, moved up above and then it came back down into the range here. Okay, where did it come back down into the range? So my trade was in in this area uh, on on the on the way up, 
right? Uh, and it did break out. Okay, now this breakout failed. It came back down into the range. Ultimately, you can see it's it's, it's succeeding here, but it's, it's taken a while here. In fact, it came back down into this little range uh, here, and it, it it tested it a few times, and we're seeing still bullish activity. Okay, but um, uh, the um, it, it failed and it came back down. Where did it pull back to? Okay, that's what we're going to go over. Okay, and then uh, here's that move higher. Okay. And then it pulls back to what point of control? And point of control was established down here. Okay, it moved up, and then uh, VWAP as well. Okay, so what did we find outside of the range? We found responsive sellers. Okay, and you can see where they started to pick up here, and also here, and then uh, ultimately down into this area. Okay, so if you're still bullish, this is another area to buy. In fact, I was thinking about it myself. Okay, but I was looking for 8283. That's where I was going to be a buyer down here. Right, so that I wanted it to spike down below VWAP, and then I'd be in and looking for the move back up. Okay, I didn't get it. Okay, it left the left before uh, I was able to uh, to get in. I, it did not happen what I was looking for. Right, and uh, look at the uh, iceberg detector here. I, I filtered mine for a hundred uh, plus and uh, 102 here traded. So someone was uh, uh, getting filled before that area as well. They were definitely bullish. All right. So anyway, there's your uh, here's your breakout and your your grind higher. Here's your mean reversion trade from the sellers, uh, and then we see the continuation. Okay. So a few different things to look at there. It's just been uh, some really nice stuff to look at uh, uh, recently on much higher time frames. Okay. Well, here's where the bulls have to take control. We can see it. Here's our line. Uh, and uh, let's see if they really pick it up here on the buy side. Okay. And uh, looking for, okay, as a scalp would be a move back up to here. Okay. Oh, three, uh, oh, 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 four, let's call it. Okay. Here they come. Uh, let's see if we can get a pullback here. It's not now. See, this is where that kind of clarity comes in. Um, you know, in this, at this time of day, you know, this is what we're looking for: is this kind of 0350 or 04 area up here? Uh, but um, I look at this volume here on this breakout compared to some of the other areas here. Like this is much clearer, much clearer, right? In terms of a breakdown, a retest back to it, and then continuation. Okay, back down to the figure. That's what we were looking for, and that's what occurred. Uh, it came down quite a bit lower here. Uh, get everyone going the wrong way again, step in, and then move it back up again. And still, uh, majority of these traders are going to get stopped out up here. So I'm still looking for it to trade up into uh, kind of 04 here. Okay, but look at the volume here. It's just meager compared to that kind of clarity that we're looking for. So uh, I, maybe, Robert, that uh, answers your question about uh, understanding that kind of clarity here. If you don't get it, then maybe, you know, don't take the risk. It, it's really up to you, you know. Uh, or, you know, maybe uh, it's not going to be as bullish. Maybe it's going to come down back to 07 or 2700 here. Okay? Maybe even a little bit lower where they initiated. Okay, until we get more clarity on that. But it's still doing the same moves, and and I'm still anticipating the spike above uh, the the line here, okay? Just because this this uh, uh, this market uh, loves to uh, uh, test these areas, rotate up and and probe these areas here. Okay, here's some higher liquidity coming in, but uh, it's not a lot, but um, See the reaction to that. Yeah, even more now. Okay, let's see. We should probably, probably find some buyers now. Okay, see the 500 just came in here. And let's we'll see what the reaction is. Okay, now they're pulling. Okay, so I, I don't, I'm, I'm still looking for this in the overall, but uh, I don't, I'm not getting any clarity from this right now. Okay, usually we do get that clarity here. Okay, because we, we found some sellers try to take it lower here, right? And I just didn't get it. Okay, there's our spike up to 04.
anyway, order flow wise, this played out. Uh, risk management wise, um, you know, I, I don't see the, it, it, this being as clear as some of the other uh, setups that we look at. Okay, imagine we're, we're, we're probably gonna find some uh, profit taking and some sellers here. Okay, and let's see if they can t trade it right back down into this 0150. Yeah, come on, guys. Let's see that move down in this this liquidity down here. Almost there. See how they're pulling, though? So they don't have the intent to trade here. Okay, there it is. It just tested it, but uh, nothing traded there yet. It just the best bid went there, as you can see. All right. Well, some nice context here. I mean, you know, I mean, the the like I said, the order flow wise, it it uh, it played out. Uh, it just didn't uh, look uh, as uh, as clear. We we want to see really them, you know, really pick it up here for that clarity uh, on that buy side for this move to take place. Um, and um, and they may actually uh, we we may see like come back up here and what if we get that clarity in the buyers uh, then I'm looking for 08 and uh, ultimately our our um, 11 area right uh, that was where we found that swing okay uh, anyway um, uh, but in terms of context there's some good examples here here's a con this is this was good uh, uh, clarity here on this move to the downside okay and they picked it up on the you know on on the sell side. Right. This is how you get these head and shoulders patterns. Like, you know, I mean, eh, you know, it, it they continue to move on up here. So, you know, but these are like shoulders. Here's your head up here. Here's your other shoulder. And then here, here's the break. Right. And the sellers take control and we get the move to the downside. Okay. And we're and then we come back up into this area here. Uh, when we see, see this move up above and above the swing here, a buyer is starting to take control above the figure as well. Uh, and then uh, looking for it to, to trade up into this 04 area here and then looking for them to take some profits up here. It spiked up above it. Now coming back down, it, it, it did come down to the 0150. And look at look at uh, even more context here, uh, uh, 151 uh, on the um, buy side uh, with hidden orders here at that area. I just noticed that now. I didn't didn't see it earlier. All right. Anyway. Uh, any questions on this? Because this kind of visual context here is pr pretty good here. Um, if we had more volume here, it would have been great. Okay, but uh, these little spikes in these areas here and this playing out uh, is pretty nice. Okay, uh, being able to see these areas here and then why they we might come back up into those areas. Yeah, uh, you'll note again and again as well um, how these these um, like the head of the head and shoulders or these kind of clusters up here. Uh, you know, a lot of times we won't get we won't even come near it again. Uh, it depends. Uh, you know, if that sell volume was strong enough here, we'll get the pullbacks. But you're you're not. This is as far as it's going to go. Is kind of this 0350 or 04, and you won't get the move even higher. Uh, because it, these guys, no one's interested in buying up here. Um, in fact, anyone that did, they're going to be sellers probably here, you know, and cut their losses. And that'll initiate the move to the downside. Uh, anyway, uh, it, it, it traded a little bit higher here. I don't, I don't know. It's a little bit of context, but uh, not much. Um, so, um, uh, boy, all sorts of stuff today. I don't even know how to review. Uh, we looked at, uh, I guess, the kind of bigger picture. 
we looked at some tweets from yesterday. We went over some trades from this morning. Uh, we're looking at higher time frame structure, okay? Putting those pieces together and then looking for that in the open. Okay, extrapolating meaning from uh, some of the trades and uh, and debriefing them, uh, understanding uh, some of the uh, nuances in the order flow at the open versus after, uh, and then uh, looking for this uh, this follow through up into that 2700 figure, uh, and um, uh, etc. So uh, some of the uh, smaller uh, time frame stuff in here, looking at uh, uh, some of that order flow, uh, we got it. Uh, it played out pretty nicely. Uh, ultimately, um, yeah, I mean, we we may you know st be in a big range here uh, for a while, uh, but uh, I still really like uh, the um, uh, this kind of um, well, we have our line up here around twelve. I think it was about eleven, uh, but um, uh, you know, keep keep that in mind. Let's, let's see if I can zoom back out. Yeah, ten, eleven, or so, somewhere around here. Okay. We may find sellers maybe even a little little lower here around 08, right? Uh, if if we find sellers here, okay, and we don't spike above, well, sellers are going to be still in control on the higher time frame. Okay, so keep an eye out for these. Uh, these are key levels up here. Okay, here's a, again that kind of example of um, see see the uh, the buying up here and see how we we uh, we come up and we, we go away from that area here and the sellers take control below that area here. Same stuff, okay, on this five minute chart that we look at on the, uh, you know, sub second levels even uh, in bookmap. Okay, and if we find more sellers up here, as we come, if we come back up into this, um, you know, nine, eight to 11 area or eight to 12 area, we, we wanna understand what's going on there, all right? All right, guys, well, let's wrap it up. We'll call it a day, and uh, we'll catch up with you tomorrow. Yeah, you're welcome, Homero. Uh, okay, everybody, yeah, uh, we'll, um, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye-bye.